Yep. Welcome back. We've got a special menu prepared for you two tonight. Oh, special. Okay, thanks. Yay! And there's good food too! Navi, uh, no, the boss is the best. The boss. You did great. Yeah, you actually cheered her up. <laughs> Excuse me? Uh, already starting to forget what happened today. I wouldn't. Ain't no way. Oh, that voice. Is that who I think it is? What is no- why is she huh? doing bawling in the sewer? It's you two. What are you doing in Fontaine? We've been in Fontaine longer than you. Finally, the Major Fontaine. Her Lady Majestus. I wonder if we're going to see her master then. Her Lady Majestus. Seriously, nobody just uses a scry glass whenever they've got time to just see who they'll meet on the road. Still, we didn't expect to see you here. Uh, wait, you're not a Fontanian, are you, Mona? Here it is. Well, I have some business to attend to here, so I booked a hotel in the city. I was just out for a stroll when I bumped into you. So is she Fontaine or not? Unexpectedly, if I might add. Why did you think I was from Fontaine, though? Is that because Magistus doesn't sound much like a mom's dad or surname? Well, I'm glad they get the comment on their own yeah. shitty writing, making everyone yeah, think. let's go with that. Well, I used to have my own surname, which was, well, some other thing. Either way, the old hag told me when she took me as her disciple that the first step to being a great astrologist's pupil was to change that name. There was nothing for it, really. She really is amazing at astrology, so I changed my name to what it is now according oh. to her wishes. So she's a monster. To surprise, however, Magistus is not the name of some ancient house or clan. Uh, it isn't? So what the hell is it? Nope. Although it is used by us in place of surnames, it generally just means great. Mona, great. Great. Wow! Imagine including a boast in your name. Wait, are you going to have to put that into your genealogy as well? I reckon so. In any case, I'd give my disciple a name like this as well, if I were to take one. What is your master's name? Astromancer Barbaloth Trismegistus. B, okay. Whoa, that's a long one. Barbaloth Trismegistus. Does it also mean great or something? B, T. My name means Mona the Great Astrologist. As for the old hag, hers is, in plain speech, the thrice as great scholar of the stars. Just take it as a title specific to astrologists. Oh, you people are fucking right, stupid. Right? That's so heavy. I know, right? <sighs> That's just how she is. She used to call herself Magistus, actually, but when she took me in, she changed her name to Tris Magistus. Talk about excessive. Magistus is thus the calling card of our school, so to speak, which makes it about the same as a surname. It's all right if you don't get it. You can look into it further should you need to study astrology more deeply. Well, it's interesting. So it's the Magistus Academy? Well, not Magistus Academy, but like Magistus School of Teaching of Astrology, essentially. Anyone who goes to the school gets the surname Magistus. So what the fuck is her actual name? Well, I was born in Mondstadt, yes. My parents migrated to Dorman Port, and I traveled with the old hag for a while, after which I settled down in Mondstadt City. Oh, that's a good thing then. At least we know you won't be dissolved by Fontaine's waters. Hmm, speaking of that, I'm sure you're aware that a bunch of things have happened here in Fontaine, right? I know you're not a local, but I'd avoid getting too close to any water that looks strange all the same. There's something ominous about it. Well, the water, I mean. Yeah, no shit. There's something's wrong with the water. We just watched off Poisson get fucking obliterated. Well, half a quarter of Poisson get obliterated. That was the main reason, yes. Just a while back, the Steambird invited me to take part in a panel and speak about the circulation of the prophecy as an astrologist. The invitation was sent quite early on. I don't think anyone expected Fontaine to be in this much trouble. What do you make 
make of that prophecy, Mona? Just tell us what you think as an astrologist. Your word would go a long way to make things more certain and less... scary. Scary? <laughs> what I can tell you is that I'm an astrologist. And that this prophecy concerns the fate of Fontaine. Even that of Altevat. Ascertaining this is akin to reading the fortune of the whole world. So why don't you? I'm afraid that this is not something that just anyone can do. If I could do it, you would no longer call me an astrologist, but a visionary. But on the flip side, the prophecy is so huge and powerful that it must surely come from a powerful visionary. Its contents involve the fate of the world. Disregarding it would be a mistake. Yeah, so when we disregard it, who wrote it? Sounds really powerful yeah. and all, but oh, man. does such a person really exist? Oh, who wrote it is not important. No, the person who wrote it is the most powerful person we should be looking for. They're quite literally the person who fucking was able to predict the fate of the world. Of course. The old hag could do it. And I'd bet there are others amongst those Hex and Zirkle colleagues of hers who could do something similar. I need to ascertain. Can you get me in touch with your master? Huh? Uh, are you sure? Yes. Hmm. All right. I'll help you. It isn't often that I see you with such a serious look on your face. I'll tell you once I hear back from her. Thanks, Mona. You're amazing as always. Oh, well, this is something only I can do after all. So yes, your praises are quite welcome. That's the greatest of astrologists for you! Of all the people we know, you know the stars the best! Indeed, indeed. <laughs> That's the spirit. Oh, sorry. I came to see what all the commotion was about. If there's anything you need, do not hesitate to inform the Spina di Rosula. Oh, whoops. I <laughs> guess we were getting a little too carried away there. Well, I'll go tend to my own business now. If I receive any news, I'll be sure to come find you two again. Sure thing, Mona. Bro, Mona and Fontaine. And there she yeah, goes, she goes quick as rushing water. And here we are with the Spina guy giving us suspicious looks. Oh, are you giving us suspicious looks? We're honored guests here, bro. Yeah, try to keep it down. If Paimon hadn't spoken for you, it'd be you getting all the weird looks. <laughs> the things Paimon does for you. Yeah, 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 Paimon. Hmm, that's more like it. Some night sleep, though. Sweet. Mona. This place is gonna start Ooh, dying soon. It's time to get out, traveler. We agreed to go see Nevelet, so let's pack it up and get going. <laughs> ah, hunters and prophets. <laughs> up we go, bro. We got to see Mona and Fontaine, and she's Monstadian. Okay, well that confirms that. Everyone who says she wasn't from Fontaine was right. There was no engine yet. Just because she has a Fontaine surname, I mean, it's kind of obvious. Why did you think I was from this country? Just because my last name is from that country? Yeah. Hello, little melusine. You're here, finally. Oh, uh, is it serious? Uh, is something wrong? Yeah, apparently. Monsieur Nervalette and Lady Farina, they, they seem to have gotten into a dispute. Please go see for yourself. Ah, father-daughter quarrel. Like I said, I've already explained everything. And yet the problem has not been properly solved. There is little space for excuses between us. It is not my intention to offend you, but please, tell me where you stand. You are the Hydro Archon Fosalor, are you not? Look at this. This is a list of the victims from the recent Poisson incident. <laughs> y you mean... they're all... Glassed, like Halo Reach. We did not arrive in time to avert this disaster, and I will not have it happen again. <sighs> I will say this once more. You must tell me everything you know. Yesterday, 
I found three stone slates in some ancient ruins near Poisson. Do you know anything about those? Seriously? You're questioning me like this is a court case now. I don't know anything about that. But you found them in some ancient ruins, you say? That's correct, <sighs> which is why I came to ask you some questions. There should have been four slates, but one of them was missing. The other three feature different images that seem to correlate to the prophecy. <laughs> the prophecy? The second of these slates depicts the previous Hydro Archon Egeria kneeling before a floating island in the sky, as if confessing something. Do you know nothing of this either? I don't! I've never seen such slates! I'll ask you again. Do you really have no information regarding the previous Archon? My deciphering of the slates indicates that the Hydro Archon Egeria once had to confess to, or apologize for, a certain sin. If anyone would know about it, it should be you. All gods don't have the same secrets, you know. She was herself and I'm me. Is it really so strange that I know nothing? I understand your concerns, but I'm sorry. I just don't have anything to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is not going well. Forgive me for saying this now, Lady Farina, but I have long known of your various secret investigations into certain matters. There are several indications that you have been investigating the prophecy on the sly. This is not strange in itself, considering that you are the Hydro Archon. But it is strange that you should also claim to not know any of Egeria's secrets, as well as do nothing following your inquiries. You have never been as superficial as you have presented yourself to be, nor are you a fool. And yet, your behavior is very inconsistent. been watching me all this time, have you? I didn't think you were that type. <laughs> you... Well, since you know about my secret investigations, then you should know I'm actually working to take care of it. There's no point questioning or suspecting me. You're the Eudix, but you're still my subordinate. You should be following my lead. Just trust in me, your Archon, and do as I say. Never mind whether you can truly convince yourself to or not, it'll all turn out fine. That's all I have to say. We do not discuss this matter again. Oh, <laughs> the opera's about to start. Toodles! Seal the door, don't let her get up. There, but she hit the slow Did Farina not notice us standing by the door? Wonder what's up with her. She was smiling. Huh. She didn't seem in the mood to care if we were listening in or not. What's that BPD, bro? Deeply disheveled. Deeply disturbed, more likely. I assume you've been outside for a while now? Yeah, awesome the melody oh, listen to you yell. You noticed! Seems Farina didn't even realize we were here. She was in a great panic. Though I cannot discern the reason. Our discussion reached impasses time and again. A state of affairs that we cannot allow to continue. Still, I do not understand. Dialogue is the basis for understanding. So why did she keep refusing to engage? She gotta hide something from you. He said, how dire the situation? No, I think she understands, bro. Everyone in her inner circle has noticed that she is hiding some secret. The issue is her attitude. I fear that she will not reveal anything unless absolutely forced to. We may have to create a situation in which she will have no choice but to speak. Unseal the sluice gate. Flood the city. Oh? Like what? Normally, people will only reveal the truth when standing trial. Perhaps we must have the Hydro Archon experience just such a scenario. And she's really good at dodging questions. How do we make sure that she won't just slip away at the first chance she gets? Because I'll be accusing her. Not we us. We need like to consider this thoroughly, join forces with various parties, and then do what we can. 
If at all possible, I would prefer to recuse myself from this affair, but we must prevent the prophecy from coming to pass. This may be cruel to her, but all Fontaine is in crisis. The information a god possesses is too precious, and so we must take a chance on this. Aren't you technically a god? Hmm. But who will lend us their aid to do such a thing? Now I think I know who to call. Where's our Lakita? A boat in quiet bustle. Well, that's everyone, huh? Speaking of which, it was pretty smart of you to think of hiding here. Poisson was just involved in a disaster, so it's presently devoid of people. That naturally makes it the best choice. And here you are, drinking tea like it's the most natural thing in the world, huh? That's what family should do. Sit and enjoy a leisurely time together. <laughs> it's nice to enjoy tea here, you know? Care for a cup? No, the world's falling Come, apart. Lend me your ears, everyone! Hmm. Or... Perhaps one of you might like to start us off. How about you, friend? That boy does not talk. Uh, me? No. I don't think I can. Hmm. Uh, then, how about you, good sir? I fear that I will cause the mood on this boat to become as somber as it is in court. This is not... This is a right well, tech group. I guess we're lucky we've got a local like me to organize things. Wonderful, the spotlight at last. I guess I'll be facilitating things from here. That was a little long-winded, don't you think? What, is oh. everyone here? You might be right. Anyway, to cut to the chase, our friend here, the Traveler, has brought us together to discuss something. As for what that is, well... Uh, let's start by saying that we'll be pooling our efforts together to create a series of traps. Oh, how intriguing. Well, it's just an expression, really. One that I just learned from Glorand. And used on the spot. So, let's invite her to explain in detail. A round of applause, please. What is happening here? I mean, I know it's happening, but what is happening here? Huh? Didn't you say that you would be facilitating this? Oh, come now. Your work doesn't involve much public speaking, right? This is a good chance to practice. You might even pick up some fancy oratory tricks to impress your boss with in the future. <laughs> I see. And what does my boss say? Hmm. <laughs> he is glad that you consider him your boss. <laughs> Do go on. What a nice group of people. <laughs> She's a real nice bouncer, Chess. In that case... <clears throat> Do any of you have experience hunting? Not that I recall. Fremine and I once it's used a wooden nature. stick in a basket to catch wild rabbits when we were younger. As for Lynette, um... Oh, right. You were sick that day, weren't you? Uh, I've also gone diving to catch some fish before. Does that count? Your experience is the closest. Uh, I'm afraid not. Why not? You may or may not have heard. But Fontaine once played host to a group known as the Marachaussee Hunters. Uh, the artifacts. Though that was their name, they did not hunt animals, but rather various monsters left behind by the ancient dynasty of King Remus. Today, Fontaine's monster population has already thinned greatly, so the hunters have blended back into society, taking up arms in other lines of work. They even left a unique methodology of hunting in their wake. A trap comprises of the following components, bait, a trigger, and a containment device. Sometimes a lethal implement will also be necessary to deal with the prey. So, if we were to build a trap together, right now, what would you choose to build it with? For me, I would prefer something basket-shaped. Pigeons and rabbits will see the bait and naturally enter the snare. Our line of work requires a deft hand, and we're some of the best in the industry, so you can count on our techniques. You used some of those techniques while moving the people of Poisson, didn't you? My subordinates mentioned that you even performed some magic for the bawling children. 
Yes, and I even managed to gather some intelligence in the meantime. I'm quite the multitasker if I do say so myself. Interesting. He's more I'm of a showman. I can't claim problem. that as my strong suit. I prefer more stable methods, like placing bait in the water and waiting for the fish to come within reach. That's the kind of method I would count on. <laughs> Calm and steady. Exactly the kind of person who would catch loads of fish. And I can be their assistant. With discretion, I'm sure. Huh. I'd probably use some sort of mechanical animal. Papa once bought me some small clockwork squirrels, mice, and such. When placed in the forest, they can attract others of their kind. I remember that you liked those too, didn't you? I did. And that would be a good way to go about it. If they're realistic enough, animals of the same kind will follow them all the way to the trap. What about you, Monsieur Nivellet? I fear I do not have any related experience. Hmm. That makes sense. You usually solve problems directly, without the use of any such tricks. But I do have one more question for you, Monsieur. If we were to create a trap now, how would you design it? Hmm. I would like for it to be effective, but bring no harm to the prey. A more gentle trap would be ideal. Hmm. Kind, as always. However, our intention doesn't necessarily change the containment device and the type of implement we need. If we wanted to kill the prey in one strike, we would need a powerful implement. However, that also goes for prey that must be captured and safely contained. It needs to be done in one implement. Why is that? Only a hunter who's a true expert at subduing their prey can snare it without harming it. The line that divides life and death is often exceedingly thin. Uh, so are we going hunting together? In a manner of speaking. Huh. We hadn't thought of seeing ourselves as hunters. It kinda works, but maybe it's still not the best metaphor. If our means of capturing and dealing with our prey is to put them on trial, and the hunting metaphor is actually quite accurate. But we shall require much more courage than any hunter to judge a god. A being whose seat is an exalted throne. That's right. Oh, so that's what's going on. Sounds very interesting. We're gonna need your father for this one. A metaphor. Right, <laughs> no, so we're not hunting her yet. What you need is simply the secret she is keeping. Hmm. Neither hunt nor prey, but there must be a trap. I don't know about that. I feel like we're still hunter and prey. No, we're definitely the hunters. Certainly not the prey. Hunters, prophets? It's almost like gods and monsters. It's interesting. We're gonna be hunting down the Archon. A trial the trapper, but we need to find a way to trap her. How do you get the Archon Archon? It's been a tough few days, hasn't it? So much has been happening. Yeah, we have to go fucking kill an Archon, essentially. Hyman <sighs> didn't think the meetings would go on for so long, but everyone seemed pretty fired up, huh? Paimon thought they'd be at least a little frightened. Well, Fremenay was, now that Paimon thinks about it, but everyone else just looked a little surprised. Now, yeah, why would they be surprised? Uh, it's what they well, do, hunt the gods. It's hard to say. Paimon doesn't have any experience with this sort of thing. But with you around, Paimon sure will do great. After all, you're the most reliable person in the world, aren't you? <laughs> uh, huh? What is it? Did you just pour some tea? Paimon didn't notice you doing that at all! Now, yeah, okay, what demon's with us? Th then what's that? Paimon's never seen that cup before! Don't be frightened. I'm just joining you two for tea. I merely refrained from saying anything till now. <gasps> Who's that voice? Uh, but there's no one here! Now, yeah, great. The same oh, one that entered the Mayar Mind. You've forgotten me already. The same one that entered the Mayar Mind hey, in the Sumeru. Sumeru. You are familiar. You're the voice we heard from the sky in Sumeru. The one that knew we <laughs> changed Ermin's song. The voice from the sky, hmm? 
I fear that description is wrong. Though, not completely wrong. Huh. You're feeling lost now, just as you were feeling previously. I sensed that confusion and thus came to you. Guiding people is an irresistible hobby of mine, after all. And who are you exactly? Hmm. Consider me a passerby. Just accepting a commission from my friend's disciple on a whim. Great. Mona contacted you. The enigmatic N. Now, what does the N stand for? What's her skin color? The prophecy. Yes. What has been prophesized will be fulfilled. Mage N. You may view such things as the history of the future. What? Then is there any way we can stop it? I believe you have witnessed a failed attempt with your own eyes. Can everything in Tevat so easily be changed? Mm, we did risk in a failed attempt of changing fate ourselves. Ah, so you've caught on. Just as prophecies are usually only the future as seen from the perspectives of the gods, could things be happening in hidden corners where the gods' gaze does not fall? Are the things that you shall see different from the fate that the gods perceive? Hmm. Interesting when you consider that Mezzeline, Mezzeline see the world differently also, and so do Abyss creatures. What is she talking about? It all sounds really impressive and important and stuff, but it also sounds kind of scary. I believe that you understand, right? Some things are insignificant, but others you must reach out to change. Ultimately, fate shall serve as your only guide, no matter what will happen in Tevat's future. All you need to do is to play your part. Hmm, this was good tea, by the way. Thank you for your hospitality. Well, that'll be all for today. The voice. It's gone. Interesting. The mind. Something you have to change, but fate can't be changed. But you have to reach out and play your part. Interesting. Oh, what? I want to hear someone talking. Get more digital, more like belligerent, bro. Who's opening the front door for these people? Hey, it's you who's getting lazy, okay? Well, I see I've walked in on some lively banter. Mona! How have you been? We got mind fucked by your friend and Fine, just fine. I went to take part in that Steambird panel. It turned out to be more interesting than I expected. Not all Fontanians are pessimistic about this. One journalist mentioned that sitting around and waiting for the end to come would be wrong, and that they should make their own rescue preparations. I agreed, so we had a brief chat with her. Uh, did she have pink hair by any chance? Is she looking at Pom Pom? Why, yes! It was Charlotte. You remember her, right? That daredevil journalist. I'm in full support of her view. Prophecies are very important, but... How can people allow their lives to be commandeered by just a few words? Simply leave the country. That's right! Paimon's glad to hear something sensible for once. Ah, yes. About what we had discussed before. I did try, but I'm afraid I couldn't reach the old hag. I'll try again tonight, but I wouldn't get your hopes up. We got brain rotted by someone else, Mona, don't worry. Huh? Who the fuck's trying to join my world? Fuck out of here, gracious. Ashley. Recording. Are you serious? Yep. It's the second time ends punched into our mind. She said that even the god's gaze has blind spots. Pretty bold if you ask Paimon. Most people would believe the gods to be all-knowing, right? I mean, if anyone... The and Circle members are certainly anything but ordinary. As for the mage named N, the old hag has mentioned her a few times. She said that N's sense of direction is incredible, and that she loves guiding those who are lost. Sounds like a seely to me. But like, if anyone would say that the gods guys have a blind spot, I would say it probably would be a high school member, considering Rhine Daughter is single-handedly summoned 
massive demons from the fucking abyss realm and fucking beast realm, so that have infected the world. But I've never met her, and if she were still alive, she'd be <laughs> well. Suffice it to say that the hag's at least a few hundred now, and N's been around for longer than that. Whoa. The Hexen Zirkle sounds like a scary group, but they must really stay in shape to live so long. Like, I know it's a throwaway line when they did the Fontaine, the wind bloom, and they're like, oh, the Hexen Zirkle. Yeah, they said they wanted to go war with the gods, and then Venti calmed them down. I think they probably could have fucking won. Their abilities alone are pretty terrifying. If she came to see you personally, then the problem you're facing must truly be of great importance. Yeah, I'd imagine. Well, it's not like Paimon could understand anything she said. Yes, she was quite cryptic, but I suspect she means that there is still a way to turn things around. She didn't say when or what that would be, though, so... But you know, basically she was saying, Perhaps it like, is outside the gods? Perhaps it's right now. Exactly, the places where the gods gaze doesn't go. You can play outside the gods gaze against their rule, play outside their rules, and you could still win. You just gotta figure out how. The moment we realize the value and the meaning, probably at the end of the game. Traveler, Paimon, are you two all right? No, we're lost in thought. Oh, we're fine. We're just a little down right now. It kind of feels like the end is coming, you know? Damn. I see. How pessimistic. I feel that same sense of desperation, too. I guess you could consider me someone who has often witnessed fate. So far as I have seen, it cannot be swayed. But even so, I still hope for and believe in miracles. Believe in miracles. Astrology is eternal and rational, but fate may not be. It is cruel, but it can also be beautiful. Perhaps that's what N was trying to tell you. Not to lose heart and to believe that what you are seeing playing out before you is not yet set in stone. I did originally think of steering clear of all this, but I couldn't. Even if this is all futile, I still wish to help everyone. If we don't struggle to the last, then how can we face the end when it comes? That was about right. Never give up. Never you surrender. Point. <laughs> there I go, talking about astrological principles again. <laughs> Sorry about that. The moment I start talking about work-related stuff... I oh, I need to get going. See you later, mother. It was worth trying to comfort you, even if only a little. I believe that you'll help those who are struggling in the same way I did. Let's see I how you want to be one of God. Maybe why we always seem to meet by coincidence. Paimon awesome. feels kind of moved by what Mona said, but also kind of sad too. Also, the fact that we've twice now heard that it was in the Taval. Of all this, Danzler says a place where the God's Gate doesn't fall, and now we've had it in game directly. N says a place where the God's Gate doesn't fall. It implies that the gods 100% are not omnipotent. If there's a place where their gaze can't fall, it means they can't know everything. Hey, Traveler, Paimon suddenly feels like going outside for a walk. Let's go. Very interesting. Let's walk around the city, shall we? There's a few spots we always like to walk by. More people will be. Shooting themselves hearing N say that one in game. A place where fate itself gazes as a fall. So Dan's left knows about it. Oh, well, his dance explains it, just probably doesn't know about it. And now we know about it in game specifically. Now, what exactly could that place be? Where's a place where you could alter fate because the gods aren't looking? Uh, what's going on? <laughs> Maybe we're famous. Let Paimon see! God, that line. The underwater stronghold, the Fortress of Meripede, has continued in its noble autonomy. But that does not mean that others cannot interact with it. My recent attempts to enter the fortress bore little fruit. Huh. Guess Charlotte still hasn't given up on that. Let's get arrested. Thus, did an Outlander friend become the focus of this report? A blind adventurer with their white fairy legends trailing in their wake. It is said that this mysterious traveler once visited the underwater fortress. 
So while the fortress's interior remains a mystery behind closed doors, do not fear, for the tales of the traveler contain surprises in spades. Journalist Charlotte's biggest scoop yet, the Traveler's Trail, World Walker. Huh. Charlotte took so many awesome photos of us and we never even noticed her. Stalker. She hasn't been able to get a hold of anything at the fortress, so since we're easier to find, she's using us as the subject matter instead? Lovely. Ugh, seriously? Well, fine. Those headlines and photos do look cool, so Paimon will forgive her this time. Good to know. Okay, so we're just going to the city. Okay. Well, this sounds like what's that the relevance? But it's good to see the world is still continuing around us. It's not just all about prophecy. There's still shit happening. People are living their lives. We're here! <sighs> Paimon's hungry. Should we go in and get something to eat? I think that's what we should see. People are living their lives and like enjoying themselves. And then the city's going to get destroyed. To show that how instant it is. I think that's what this is trying to hint at. It does not look like the place you can just walk in, bro. Like, you need a reservation. Quick! Look! That's... That's the limited edition only 16 slices a day cake! It hasn't sold out today? It was so delicious the last time we tried it! Despite the tense situation we were in, let's give it another go! I'm sure it'll be great! Come on out ahead of us. One slice of cake, please. <sighs> Someone showed up after all! That melazine got our ass immediately. <laughs> Are you here to buy cake so too? <laughs> it seems Monsieur Nervalette was right. You really can eat. What does that mean? Wait, did he really say something like that? I guess he speaks freely with right. little words. Even he has his own preferences when it comes to food. As for me, I love the cake and coffee here. Do you come here often? Is Sadine the one we interact with? I know my mirror's pretty up there, but I feel like Sadine, we interact with, with, like, Sadine, we interact with like, the second one. Every day? You get cake every day. It's part of my daily schedule, apart from work. I shall have my cake and coffee. Uh, What's wrong with that? Then what if someone told you one day that this place would be closing soon, and you wouldn't get to eat cake here anymore? What would you think? But why would it close? Well, Paimon doesn't know either, but maybe... Maybe the waters will rise tomorrow. You know, like in the prophecy. Why would you say that? Oh, the prophecy. Um, to be honest, I haven't paid much attention to that. No, still, even if there'd be no more cake tomorrow, that wouldn't keep me from having some today. No, no, it's the same for eating in general. You might not be able to eat tomorrow, but if you can do so today, then you should carry on. That's what people call living, you know. Huh. Don't be sad. Excuse me, could I have two more slices of cake to go? Mm. These two slices are for you. Sijuin said that this kind of expression you're making is what humans call being sad. Do people seem to get dissolved in water? Oh, you know Sijuin? Of course she does. I sure do. Mm -hmm. She was born before me, and she sometimes comes to the surface to teach us things about humans. She said that humans are creatures that are saddened easily. Yes, and you can only lift their spirits by feeding them delicious food. So please try the cakes here. I've got something else to do, so I'll be going now. You two try to stay in a good mood after eating, all right? Mm -hmm. Bye. Wow. <laughs> Sadine is and the best one. All right, let's dig in. I'm unsure this cake will be delicious. What an interesting uh, mindset that. Oh, do Melzins also dissolve in primordial water? I wonder what it's their reaction is. It's more delicious than last time! And the flavor gets even better with a sip of tea! It sure would be nice if and we could come don't again Don't fret about there not being a tomorrow when you can live in today. It sure would be nice if we could always eat delicious food here. It's a good mindset to have. God. This has to be setting up like a horrific scenario. But, like the idea of you get into a rut because you keep thinking oh, about the world's gonna. We're end. near the Seabird office. Let's go look for Charlotte and have a chat. Wow! If it isn't the Traveler and Paimon, oh, 
Have you seen the article I wrote about you? No. <laughs> we saw the headline. Some nerve. You just used us to make some quick mora. <laughs> what? Oh, you needn't worry about that. I heard that you were in Poisson some time back, so I sent you a letter to discuss just that. It appears you didn't receive it, though. Yeah, must be on Poisson again. Right, That's not why. I've set aside the amount intended for you. I've even set the table with some food. That's uh. Really? Well, you're the best. <laughs> you're almost a little too easy to win over, Paimon. If I were a journalist with ulterior motives, you'd be in trouble now, you know. Oh, Paimon knows you're not like that. Still, she's a journalist. You should not trust her. Were you looking for me? When Mona mentioned you, we thought of coming to see you at work. <laughs> I see. It seems you've already bumped into Mona here in Fontaine. So she mentioned me? What did she say? She said that you're a real daredevil of a journalist. You have hella side move. <laughs> nice. In which case, can this daredevil journalist dare to request an exclusive interview with the legendary traveler and Paimon? Ah. Huh? So your article in the paper today doesn't count? No, that wasn't a direct one-on-one. -on -one. Oh, of course it doesn't. That was more like live photography. What I'd like to do is dive deeper and ask you to talk about the things you've seen and experienced. Seriously, want to interview me, the dude who saved four nations? Yeah, are we even qualified enough? Why not? If I say you're worth an interview, then you're worth it. But not right now, of course. <laughs> okay. I need a few days to prepare. Oh, in that case, we'll just chat when you have the time then? That's black. She will not be here in a couple oh, days. So that's a yes? Ooh, splendid! I'll tell the editor-in-chief immediately. I'll have to apply for lighting, a venue, some props, and... <laughs> what? Ooh, so much to get done now. Talk to you later. That's a whole process. Guess we're going to interview my Charlotte. Hey, Charlotte, Paimon's still got a question for you. Is she actually going to answer? And what's that? If... Just for example, Fontaine were to be flooded tomorrow? What would you do today? Huh, that's the prophecy you're talking about, isn't it? I mean, I do hear about it often, but I've never once thought that the day could be tomorrow. If you're seriously asking, then I might try and think of a way to leave Fontaine. Oh, but I'm still a journalist first and foremost. That means I have a duty to be reporting from the scene, and secondly, I wouldn't forsake my homeland that easily. From what I've seen, most people don't know what they'd do should the worst come to pass. In truth, it might be better just to behave like normal rather than worry over such an end. So in all likelihood, I'd probably still be prepping at the office for that interview of ours. I know what you're thinking. That sounds a bit sad, but I've always believed that it's best to do what you enjoy. Just think about it. If this nation really were to be suddenly destroyed tomorrow, but I still successfully finish an exclusive interview with a truly unique person, then the story I would wind up writing would truly be timeless. And then do you know what I'd do? Well, I'd write that story, send it for printing, and use messenger pigeons to get copies out to the various nations as soon as possible. I'm not a dreamer, nor am I a workaholic, but I do love my job, and I'd be proud of leaving such an article behind. I guess you could say that I was born to be a journalist. Yep. But anyway, that's my answer. And on that note, I'll get back to my preparations. At least the last thing you do is save people and warn others. That's so nice. All of a sudden, Paimon actually kind of envies her. Anyway, let's go and take a She's look at this scene, shall we? I don't want to see this in here. It's going to be rising. She's got driving ambition. That damn clock. The sea breeze and scenery can be a pretty soothing combo, huh? Mm. Paimon's been thinking. What if it does happen? If it wasn't Fontaine, but all of Tevat that would be destroyed tomorrow, where would we go and what would we do? Who's we? No, Paimon should ask, if you could choose, what would you like to do? Our home planet. We've always been moving to the next destination, so we haven't spent much time thinking about these kinds of things. We didn't have to either, with us always being on the road and whatnot. Interesting question. Who said 
You would survive if the fucking place got destroyed. You mean, still traveling? Every single moment they have to look upon this world. I mean, we've been to other planets. Huh. Wait, isn't that what we've always been doing? The banter goes back and forth. The time goes by, night falls, you return to your accommodations. I mean, it's always what we've been doing. Our traveler has been to other planets before landing on this one. I wonder how we would get off this planet. No. Oh. She's the interview. All goes well. What could go wrong? Everything seems good. <sighs> Feels like you'll grow mold if you stay here long enough. <laughs> what does that mean? But it's still better than the Fortress of Meripede, that's for sure. It's not only damp there, but salty too. Yeah, but you always talked about that place. You said that was like the best place you ever oh, stayed. So the two of you are still here. Wonderful. An auditor? Oh, oh, you're no. from the Palais Mermonia, aren't you? I'm not paying taxes. Yes, I'm Isadora. Monsieur Nervillac sent me to look for you two before. I heard that afterward you went to the Fortress of Meropede. Uh, that was a long time ago. <laughs> Not at all. I'm well aware that you're friends of his. Actually, I'm here to pass along a message from him. That's it, right? Yes, inside the Opera House. The Mari Chaussee Phantom has declared the incident a small-scale riot. A riot? A riot? For what? Well, that said, I don't personally think it was that serious. Okay, well. Lady Farina was watching a performance at the Opera House. And while she was resting during an intermission, some other audience members suddenly started harassing her. Loudly accusing her of doing nothing about the prophecy crisis. And before she could respond, others started to join in. If she bumped my song, got killed, so I mean... The crowd continued to grow, and protests against the Hydro Archon started to break out. So people have started to put the blame on Farina. Guess they finally found an outlet for the pressure they've been under due to the prophecy. I mean, who else would think that? I agree. People will naturally rely on gods, as is customary. But the moment people feel threatened, gods are also the first to be blamed. So what happened after that? Is Farina okay? Seeing that the situation was spiraling out of control, and that further argument was pointless, she claimed that she'd gotten tired of this and left in a hurry. The Marichose Phantom had their hands full maintaining order and did not catch where Lady Farina had gone. Only when things had stabilized did we realize that she had gone missing. So, you mean she's still missing? That's right. The Marichose has dispatched many people to search for her, but we don't have any leads yet. That said, I don't think there's much to worry about. She is a god after all. Even if she were to fall into the hands of rioters, what could ordinary people do to her? Good. So she just, yeah, she, Monsieur she doesn't have, me to well, tell she should have the situation, but he didn't say anything else. Don't worry, this is more than enough to go on. Thanks for keeping us informed. Ah, oh, is that so? Well, alright then. In that case, you two take care. I'll be heading back to the palais now. I wonder if she's going to Poisson, because that's the place where the people died. That would have triggered this event. We should hurry over to Poisson then. Yeah. If we know Farina, she won't try to fix things in this situation. Instead, she'll look for a place to wait out the heat. And as we also know, she may be loud and dramatic, but she doesn't have a heart of stone. Yeah, so she should be in Poisson. Whenever I was talking to her in the Palais Mermonia, and she heard about Poisson, she couldn't hide her sadness and remorse. It would be hard for her to ignore being accused by the public today. Paimon thinks Farina's probably taken the opportunity to slip away to Poisson and try to relieve the sense of guilt that she's feeling. Huh. Well, what do you think? Paimon knows the answer, of course, but Paimon can do the analysis to back it up, too. Cool, huh? It yeah, looks like the detective knowledge made you intelligent. And that's not the right of sport to, to make him more intelligent. <laughs> Let's go! Great. 
Croissant, we go.